everybody and welcome to the coffee shop show today i'm sorry i'm struggling to keep a straight face like if you don't see it peter danced <laughs> on the intro music he was dancing and he doesn't dance <laughs> well sitting down <laughs> it's, a, it's a miracle you have to go and watch it please go and watch it anyway welcome to the coffee shop conversation show this is where entrepreneurs from around the world get together every single week for an hour of just chatting and learning and connecting and having fun. We have an awesome lineup today with some of the most amazing entrepreneurs joining us on the actual show. Um, they're absolutely fabulous. People from all around the world are here to participate in the show. Remember, if you see something that you like or someone that you haven't connected with yet, these are our personal picks. These are the entrepreneurs that you want by your side. These are the people that are worth connecting with. And all of their LinkedIn links are in the description below. You are welcome. That is what we do for you every single week. Oh, yes. I am Nastine. And that would make me Peter. <laughs> we are the co-founders of Explore Protec Entrepreneurial Haven. And um, we're so happy to be here with you today. On that note, let's get straight into it. So today's topic, learn or pay. How do you actually know where to draw the line? The line. <laughs> How do you know where to draw the line? <laughs> yeah, what Peter said. So, uh, sorry guys, I've been teaching the whole morning, like it's taking a toll. But um, yeah, so where do you draw the line in entrepreneurship? It is so difficult. Like we speak to so many people that are scale-ups um, and it's like you literally just like survive the startup world. You know your game, you know, you know how to be a good solopreneur and everything. Now you actually want to figure out how to get your time back. Because otherwise, this whole game that you entered into to begin with um, doesn't really work out. Because most of us don't get into entrepreneurship because we want to create a job for ourselves where we get to work 18 hours a day for the rest of our lives. No, thank you. Right? <laughs> so this is where this comes in. So how do you know when it's time to pay or when it's time to just keep learning, sucking it up and doing it yourself? Like, where is that actual line? Um, so I'm super keen to hear from our actual tribe members um, and our beautiful guests on the show today. So what I'd like our uh, panel members to do, if you have insight on this topic or something to say or a comment or any wisdom you can give to us in this regard, so when do we need to start paying, when do we actually uh, know it's time to just keep learning and doing things ourselves, I want you to put up your heart on the screen like so, and that will give me and Peter an indication that you have something to say. We will then cue you into the conversation from there. So please go ahead, and if you have something to add on the topic of when is the time to start paying, and when is the time to just suck it up and learn, please put up your hearts now, and keep the hearts coming throughout the conversation, guys, because we have an hour conversation. So whenever you're ready to say something, chip in and say something, just put up your heart, and me and Peter will bring you into the conversation. Okay. Okay, so first up, let's hear from the Colby. Chris, what do you have to say on this topic? It's, it's not fair, because I get to research it before we do the show for everyone. But anyway... Um, I always say, something I always say is, uh, what is the cost of not doing something? So work it out, work out your time uh, to, to see whether the cost of not, do, not paying somebody else and having that extra time is, you know, what that's going to cost you um, and work that out. Um, then the other point that I just wanted to make is, is you don't necessarily physically have to pay somebody. It's tough times, boys and girls. There's a lot of stuff going on. So there's other ways to get that right. You've got collaborations, you've got energy exchanges, you can do things very, very differently. I actually had a meeting today, which will involve a very profitable, I think, long-term energy exchange. So first I'll be doing a little bit of freebie work, but down the road it'll translate into cash in my pocket. And from there I'll be able to outsource and get somebody else to do it. So ask yourself, what's it going to cost um, to do it yourself in the time um, that it'll take to learn the new skill 
Uh, the other thing is, is find unique ways. You don't physically have to pay cash. You can pay with some energy or share skills or something like that. And the last, last, last one I want to say is, is maybe sometimes it's good to learn just a little bit of that something, just that whoever you're getting to do it for you, they can't pull the wool over your eyes as well, um, which lands up costing you more money down the road. So just get a basic idea of what it is. Um, this could be anything from, I don't know, video editing to social media advertising to your pay-per-click or whatever. And uh, those are my three for today. I'm Chris Colby from Live to Dream. Your, we reboot your marketing. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Chris. I love it. That's absolutely awesome. Um, opportunity cost, definitely a very, very relevant um, consideration to take into account when we're thinking, should I learn? suck it up or should I start paying so I mean definitely from my side I do something once <laughs> once I figured out the process I'm ready to hand it over and then it's Peter's problem to figure out how he's going to pay them <laughs> like in what currency but I love that thank you so much let's go to the coach that has turned around our business and has literally built our business from scratch with us. The absolutely most amazing person in the whole entire world. Oh yes, please remember to say at the end of your actual sentence, like at the end of your answer, you need to say your name, your business name, and a little bit about what you do, okay? So, just like Chris does, just did. Chris Colby, Live to Dream, we reboot your marketing. Okay, sorry, anyway, moving on. The coach that did everything and that we built our business from scratch on his shoulders. Stephen Levy, I'm so keen to hear your guidance on this topic. Hi there, Stephen, Pete, and everybody that's on the show tonight and everybody that's listening to your show tonight or tuned into your show. Yeah, it's a fascinating topic. So um, I think the I would have, I had a look at it, learn or pay, and I quickly went in my head and it went learn and pay. Um, so I think, you know, entrepreneurs, depending where you are on your journey. So I'm going to go through this quickly because in the first part of your journey, sometimes we need to learn first because we can't afford to pay. And I think the decision that we make is when we get to that point in our, in our journey where we have to actually make the decision is what, it, and Chris alluded to, is what is it costing us to not pay? So there's a, there's a, there's a balance in when you start off your journey, but you actually spoke about people that are already on their journey and maybe built up to that stage. I think learning is a continual journey. We're always learning. Um, and then we have to learn when is it time to pay? And I think that answer is when the hours that we're putting in to something that we're doing is taking away from what we're good at and stopping us generating the revenue that we should be in order to pay for that person who uh, specializes in what we're not good at. And just understanding that. So don't spend too much time. If 80% if of your time is taken up on stuff that you don't know how to do, okay, you're only giving 20% of your time to your business. If you gave that 80% of your time to your business, you would probably be able to afford the person who specializes in that, and they would do it better, and they will generate uh, leads for you, and they will attract clients with the right messaging. So I think there's a very powerful statement that Chris made is, what is the cost of not paying it? That's Stephen from Dare to Be Coaching and Beyond. Thank you so much, Stephen. I absolutely adore that insight. Um, and I'm super keen to also hear from Christine. Christine, our beautiful coach from Canada. What do you have to say on this topic? Pay or learn? Or learn to pay? Which one is it? Uh, I'm a little controversial in the fact that I think we outsource too early, uh, especially the marketing story lead generation piece. We really think that the answer is somebody else will do it for us. And I don't mean the execution piece. The execution piece, I agree, if it's not your skill set to create graphics, outsource that. But you're outsourcing the thinking too early. And I see it's one of the biggest mistakes I see people make. Because if you're not clear on who you serve, why you, what's in it for the client journey, you cannot 
absolutely fundamentally, if I could scream it loudly, I would, you cannot abdicate this. You cannot give it out to someone else and think that they will bring your business. Because I will tell you, somebody will take your money. Somebody will take your money to bring you leads, to make it pretty, to be in your community. And I will tell you, if they don't know who you are and represent your voice really well, the wrong leads will get you exactly zero clients. And so I will tell you, I'm a little controversial. I say it to my clients all the time. If you need to do one thing, it's spend some time with somebody, a mentor, a coach, somebody who can get you really clear on who do you serve? Why are you in business? What impact do you want to make? That's the most important money you could ever spend. Because remember, if you are spending money on marketing to bring you clients, the first thing you need to do is build your audience first. And you are always renting social media space. So he who wins the social media game is who has the biggest pockets. If you are starting out in a business and bootstrapping it, it's not you. Don't play there. You're in with sharks, you'll get eaten and you won't see any revenue. So I'm quite controversial in the fact that I often say to clients, you're outsourcing too early and you're outsourcing because you're scared. You don't know what you're doing. It's okay to be scared. We have to figure that out. And only when you're really clear, is it the right thing to do to pay somebody else to represent your voice? And even then, I say to my clients, at least on a weekly basis, invite yourself back into the conversation. This is your business. Invite yourself back into the conversation. They are working for you and they need to make sure that you're clear. It represents your impact. So that's what I think about it. I am Christine Campbell Rapp and I'm the owner of Clear Acceleration Inc. I'm a business success coach who really helps you actually get clear who you're serving, why you want to do this, what's in it for your clients so that you can see success. And when the time comes, you will outsource, but it is not the thing you do first. And too often I see it done too early and it's expensive. And it's a waste of money. So there you go. Controversial <laughs> from Canada this morning. <laughs> no, actually, Chris, Christine, that's actually not controversial. It's actually, it's good practice. And, and I'll, I'll tell you why I agree with that is because, especially within our space, it's very easy to outsource. Um, it's not very easy to outsource when you are outsourcing to people that do not understand what your business is. So finding strangers to outsource to is not a very good idea. Um, however, in our space, because we are surrounded by so many people that have followed this journey with us, most of the people within the space have actually followed the journey. They understand the space. Outsourcing to people that you know within a space becomes a whole lot easier um, because they understand what the journey is. They understand what it's all about. They understand the, even the dynamic of how the relationships are built within the space. Um, it becomes a whole lot easier. So. I 100% agree with you, um, even down to the degree of don't outsource to people you don't know. Um, you know, somebody can market themselves as the best in the business at doing what they're supposed to be, but if you don't know them, you actually have no clue. So um, get to know people, you know, get to know them. Um, it, allow them to experience your space. Um, those are the people that when it is time to outsource, and like Christine said, not too early, because but when the time comes, then at least you have the people that not only understand your dynamic, they understand your heart, your thought process, everything about you, it becomes so much easier. Mm -hmm. Amen. One tip, one tip here also I would say is if you are deciding to outsource, ask around. Because just because someone says to you, I can do it, and you've met them on a social media platform, doesn't mean you should hire them. <laughs> so ask your network. I said, if I need somebody for lead gen, I should be able to find you because you're exceptional at your job. You keep telling me you're exceptional at your job, but I should be able to find you. And if not, ask somebody you know who works with somebody, vet it in your network. And if you don't have a great network, come to the coffee shop every week, connect with the people here on the screen because we are like you, we are you. We are might be further ahead of our chapter, but then you need to, Remember, you never advocate responsibility ever for the people that are working in your business. This is your vision. You need to hold it. You need to cast it. You need to monitor, monitor it. And you need to make sure that they're a fit for you. And there will be a fit for you. Don't take the first one just because they say, hey, I found you on a social media platform. I can help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instantly. 
Thank you, Christine. And just what I love about the freaking show. Like, it always makes me think so much. I was just thinking, like, wow, that's actually correct. Like, we spent the whole first two years of, okay, well, we haven't been bored. <laughs> You're in the half of our business, literally just in coaching sessions with two amazing coaches. The one was Mr. Levy from the business side, and the one was Mr. Westwood from the marketing side. And they would ask the most irritating questions every single week without fail. And sometimes the same question every single week without fail. What value are you actually offering? How are you communicating that? Have we looked at your messaging for the 3,000th times? Have we done the customer profiles for the 6,000th times? And only after that, but now that is the process that we've developed together, that we are now actually in a position that we can outsource because it's, it's now like a defined teachable process where we know if you do this, you That's the result. get this result. That's when you're ready to outsource. So thank you so much, Christine. You always make me think. I adore it. Okay, next person that always, always makes me think. Alan, are you in Cairo? Are you in the middle of, of the air right now? Because you travel so much, I never know with you. <laughs> thank you, Christine. Um, I am actually in the frozen BC North, uh, little community of 300 uh, First Nations people. Uh, so, I was just uh, commenting on the uh, on the live stream uh, that um, be careful about what you try and do yourself. There are technical things that can hamstring your business that you need to be very careful about in terms of uh, website uh, mechanics, Facebook mechanics, those types of things. Uh, but as Christine said, don't just outsource it to the first pretty face. Hi, that. Uh, comes along because you need to really, you're really putting your trust in your business in their hands. And you need to be careful about that. Think of it as uh, putting your kid in somebody else, in a complete stranger's car and say, well, bring them back at five, right? If you, if you won't do that, then you should think twice about uh, uh, um, that particular business. And that's why here at the at Export ProTech, uh, we date people and we encourage them to date us so that you figure it out. Is it a fit? Yes, no, and, and go forward. Um, on when do you learn is, when it has something directly to do with your passion or something directly to do with the functioning of your business. You, know, uh, you need to learn basic financial language. You don't need to learn the tax laws, but you need to really understand that revenue in, if it's less than the uh, bills out, you're probably not in the right orientation. So that's, a, that's my two cents. And, and I know exactly what Christine said when you go too early. Uh, I started this when I was in my mid-50s. So not a lot of time left over. But uh, I'll, that's all right. I'll just get a coach. He'll teach me. Yeah, he took my money because I didn't really know where I was. <laughs> now that I do, it's a, it's a lot more productive to have a uh, – uh, a lieutenant in the right hand seat driving, you know, navigating while you drive down that road of business. I'm Al McDonald's, Industrial Employee Safety, coming to you from Northern BC. Um, uh, Alan, I, yes. so I, would, I would think that it would depend on how well behaved your children are. They might drop them off before five. <laughs> um, uh, if you if they're well behaved, you might get them back at five. But if they are little monsters and terrors, well, um, yeah. Well, that's what they signed up for. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and certainly, as uh, as um, someone that that uh, does deal with with clients, as we all do, and, and coaches and coaches that deal with their own clients, it's okay to fire a client. Right. 
Sorry, here's your monsters back. You really don't know where you're going. And I'm sure Christine has done that. Say, I'm sorry. But yeah, no, you don't. I can't take your money. You're just not where you need to be. Here are the things you need to do. As having had employees, um, it is true. They don't own a bolt in it and they don't care. As much as you might like to think that you're the most wonderful person. Try not paying them on payday. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We uh, have a disclaimer out on the screen right now, right, Chris? <laughs> we don't advocate that you do that. <laughs> oh, those were some very good points. Thank you so much, Alan. Um, some very insightful points. I agree with like literally everything you're, um, you said. I'm so sorry that you got taken for a ride by that coach. Um, that's literally why we have this network, because I got screwed over in business so many times. Peter was like, Miss D, <laughs> you're not going to make it if I don't build good people around you. <laughs> and soon. So that's why all of you are here. So thank you so much for being here. You're amazing. Okay, let's go to Natalie Clark. Natalie, um, you also had your heart up. So pay or learn. And everyone else that still wants to speak, Please put up your hearts as well, because I, I forget the hearts. <laughs> Natalie, Hi go for everyone. it. Hi to everyone. Hi to all the listeners. Thanks for tuning in with us today. Okay, so my view is basically twofold. One is that learning is your journey. And if you're not learning with people and you're not learning with the right people, you're not going to grow your business the right way. So this is the best place to start because we have the team that have not only got the experience, They've got the knowledge, they've got the skills, and they can also talk you through the things that you don't understand. Because like Christine says, the amount of time we spend on social media, we put stuff out there and what happens? It falls into the sinkhole and nobody sees it, nobody understands it, nobody identifies with it, and nobody knows who you are. They don't know what you can offer because you were shooting in the dark. The other aspect is payment is something we learn. Somebody needs to teach us how to bill, when to bill, how to bill right, what to charge. These are all new things in a new paradigm. Back in the day you went to work, you got a salary, you could bill for what it was that you, 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 know, you knew your rate was. Now we're in a world where there are thousands of coaches, thousands of entrepreneurs. Where do you fit? How do you sell yourself locally? How do you sell yourself on the global platform? Can you charge the same here that you charge there? Is it seen in the same value to from one person to the next? This is all something that you need to tackle. And it requires people that have already walked the path. And thankfully, there are those out there. So don't be scared to ask. Funny enough, there are lots of people out there that are willing to share their knowledge and guide you in the right direction. So I think it's a balance on both scores. You need to be learning and you need to be open to learn. You need to be open to criticism advice, counsel, not so that it breaks you down, destroys you and takes away your ability to stand up strong and show up in your business, but so that you can just circumvent the pitfalls and always come out on top. And that's me, Natalie Clack, Just Be Coaching Company, Johannesburg, South Africa. Thank you, Natalie. I just, I adore the thought process that you and Mr. Levy have going on with the learn and pay um, movement basically, because I feel like as an entrepreneur, the moment you stop learning, you're dead in the water. Like, that's just like, you can be outsourcing to the most amazing person in the world. Like, you're not going to be doing that for for too long if you stop learning and understanding. And it's, it's just like Alan also said, like, it's your job to understand basic tax and basic finance. You don't have to be a tax expert and start doing tax opinions but you have to be able to hold your own in a boardroom. So, so valuable, guys. I love it. I'm learning so much. Let's learn some more from Janine. Hi, everyone. I'm Janine Lingenfelder, owner of Jelani Sales. And to all the listeners and guys that's tuning in. So, you know, when it comes to your career, <laughs> benefiting what am I trying to say? By diversifying yourself is beneficial to you and your business. And it comes back to learning it, 
learning the certain skills that you're scared of. And sometimes it's very easy, easy to just outsource, but there's a big responsibility that comes with outsourcing. And firstly, that is knowing the person. Is it falling in line or are they falling in line with your values? If not, they're not the right person to outsource to. It is very easy to outsource, but it's, it sometimes can bite you. So don't, be, don't get bitten. Find the right tribe and do it right. I'm Janine from Jelani Sales, your virtual sales office. Thank you so much, Janine. We absolutely adore you so much. By the way, guys, go check out our other shows on our YouTube channel. She and Chris bring some real magic to the screen. She's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. I was thinking, what was I thinking, Peter? I don't know. I'll tell you in a moment. <laughs> it was about paying and learning and I'll tell you guys now. Let's go to the next person. Sorry. Like, you made me think so much that I forget what I was thinking about. Next person. Marty, let's hear from you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to um, this live stream. It's good to have you here. I'm excited to be here. So I grew up with a dad who, who taught us that you have to learn something new every day. Um, but it doesn't mean that I say you have to just outsource or you just have to learn. I'm a DIY type kind of girl. So if I can learn something and do it myself, then that's what I'll do. But I think it's important to have a basic understanding of tasks before we outsource it. So when we understand what's the pain that it goes into doing this thing, like whether that is you want a, a wedding dress, as an example, what's the pain that goes into making this wedding dress? How much time, effort, goes into that then you'll understand what actually why you pay what you pay for that wedding dress um making mistakes is a good opportunity to learn by making mistakes in, in in other words do your own social media as an example um and making mistake and learn from it so it's important to test and measure track what you've done measure to see whether you're actually on the right track um understand someone else touch on understanding your own worth and your value and once you've gone through the pain, you'll understand the worth and the value that the other person is bringing to your business. Um, do you do your due diligence before we outsource? And people do business with people they know, like, and trust. It's important to actually know that who you outsource to, uh, your values need to be aligned. And that's Marty from Complete Virtual Assistance. We provide ethical and efficient support to, of a high standard to business executives with it through an implemented system. Thank you so much, Marty. I adore those. Those are very good tips. And I remembered what I wanted to say because <laughs> you also touched on it. Um, if there's a process in your business that you've developed to the point where you like, no, for every dollar that I invest in this process, I make three. That is when you're like, I'll spend money on this now. Because now you can put $1 in there and you get three back the whole time. That is where you want to get to. It takes time to develop that kind of process, it though. Does. Which is why we have people like Linda Dent in our lives. Linda, I'm so keen to hear your thoughts on this topic. Yeah, I've been listening with great interest to all the other panelists and this just some amazing tips and advice here, right? So those watching must be just getting loads of gems and golden nuggets out there. So the 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 little bit that I wanted to add is related to the time, energy, money dilemma where I think you said it right up front, you know, do we really want to be working 16 hours um, slogging away at our business and have no time for any family, friends, fun, uh, going out, nothing at all or exercise, you know, um, and it's something that is really dear to my heart because as many of you know, I have a philosophy in life, which is glee. And GLEE stands for Grow, Learn, Empower, and Enjoy. So that last E is absolutely vital. So if you're a kind of person who's looking to grow your business with not spending all your hours on it but and, and not spending all your money on it, 
um, and not spending all your energy on it, but trying to find a balance across the three, then what do you have to do? Well, first of all, you have to decide how much time am I willing to spend on each of the activities that form part, part of your whole life, right? Not just work. Um, then how much energy do you actually have? Um, you know, do you get tired at six o'clock at night? Do you, are you too tired to get up and start work until nine? Or do you have loads of energy? So each of us as an individual, uh, is the answer is going to be different. So I can't tell you work eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours. Some of you might just want to work five. So you've got to determine how much time do I have? How much energy do I have? And you need to know how much money you have, right? Um, it, knowing your numbers is a key factor in running a business. So you, can't, you can't do this just by delegating everything to your accountant. So once you have those three answers for yourself, the best way I know how to make a decision is to monitor and track those things. What is going on with my money each week, each month? What is happening with um, the time I'm spending? Um, Stephen made a point earlier about, you know, are you spending just 20% of your time maybe in, in actual client meetings and 80% of your time just doing social media or in networking? You need to find that balance between them all. So one way to know is you might know it intuitively, but one way to really know is by measuring and tracking it on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. And then my final point on it really is you can't just track it and leave it. You need to review it. So once a week, once a month, every quarter, you look back over the results of all that tracking and ask yourself or your mentor, coach, advisor, network, um, what went well, what could have gone better, and what am I going to do differently and then you can decide, look, I've got money, but I've got no time. So I will invest in outsourcing or something. I've got no energy, but I've got time. So let me invest in exercise, eating properly and getting some good sleep because then I'll get more energy. And I've got money, but no time. Then maybe that's the time to outsource. This is Linda Dent. Just ask Linda Business Coaching. I help my clients to grow with glee. Hashtag truth bombs. Linda, wow, where have you been all my life? <laughs> that was so simple. You have like this ability to make the most emotional decisions in the world, like seems so simple. It's like no time but money equals outsource. What's the other stuff that she said? Really? <laughs> it just makes so much sense. I absolutely adore it. Thank you so much. Um, and I actually reminded me that I actually do have a background in accounting. I should start using it because they taught me how to do like investment appraisals, right? Where you like literally what you're supposed to do with all of these boring calculations and you figure out what's the return on investment going to be if I invest this money today in scenario A. B and C and then you can decide so yeah thank you so much Linda I absolutely adore it let's hear from your complete opposite but still one of our absolute most favorite people in the whole world the other coach that we've built this network on she's not paying attention and I'm still like at any point in time she's gonna realize that it's her <laughs> <laughs> I had a heart up to agree. I only realized afterwards <laughs> something someone said. But I agree with everything everyone said. The only thing I would say is that besides all of that as well, sometimes we are, myself included in my own business, are so close to our businesses that you actually think you can learn everything and you take it all on, but you actually need somebody else's, as you know, their eyes on it too. So that's when I would outsource. And I've been in that situation recently where everything is just so on top of me and um, it's too much for me to actually, to actually handle. It's overwhelming because I'm in it. 
So that's when I also think it's a good time to outsource. If you don't have the money, find the money sometimes because you need it. You actually sometimes just need to do it to be able to take a step back and let somebody else do it for you. That's what I say. I'm Karen, fascinating seven. <laughs> Thank you so much, Karen. That's absolutely amazing. Um, some really, really awesome advice. And um, a big shout out to our beautiful people watching on YouTube and commenting in the live stream. We absolutely adore you. You are the people that make this show a possibility. So um, Clarissa and Rona watching right now, we just want to give you guys a big shout out and thank you for the awesome comments that you've been leaving in the actual live chat. Um, and without further ado, let's go to someone that is here for the very first time on our very own coffee shop show all the way from, I think it's Canada, ways, one of the most amazing networking owners in the world, joining us live right here, right now, for the first time on the Coffee Shop Show. Wes, blow us away. We're ready. <laughs> Thank you for uh, allowing me to be here. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. And uh, I think I'm speaking to the choir here. Everyone here has offered some amazing advice, so there's not a whole lot that I can add. But there's a really cool tool, and this is one of the things that I think a lot of businesses, uh, especially owners, don't understand what their time is worth. And so when we can identify what our time is worth, we can start to figure out what things we should be working on in our business, right? So, and I love what Christine um, said about uh, understanding your business first before you outsource it. Uh, biggest challenge business owners have in marketing is they don't understand their message and they try to outsource it. And then their marketing becomes an expense instead of an investment, right? So everyone out there, if you're marketing right now and you're not getting a return on your investment of for every dollar of at least $2 or more to follow Dan Kennedy, two to 20, and you get it within a couple of weeks, stop doing it and go back to the drawing board and figure out what your message is, right? The, um, the other thing I wanted to share, if I can share my screen with you guys, I have a really cool tool I'd just like to share with you. Um, and, it's, and it's quite simple. It's what you need to stop doing and start doing. And what I like about this tool is it really kind of lays out some things that a business owner, if you base what you're doing with a time value, you can maybe start to figure out exactly what it is that you should be doing that you're not doing, right? $500 an hour, negative. So every time you do one of these activities, take a $500 out of your pocket and stick it in the, on the stove, in the oven, in a burning barrel and light it on fire. Because if you're drinking alcohol or you're smoking weed, eating junk food, spending time with negative people, right? Those toxic individuals, right? Chasing shiny objects. How many guys chase shiny objects? <laughs> We're entrepreneurs. Every single one of us do, right? Got to stop doing that, right? And then you get into the space of how do, what do I need to be focusing on? If you look at the very bottom, and I'll let you guys read this. I'll put it in the chat for you to share and uh, amongst everyone. But, you know, $20,000 an hour activities, right? How do, would you, would everyone here like to get paid $20,000 an hour? Absolutely, right? Everyone would. So why don't you start treating your business like that? Start looking at ways to improve your gross margins. Start cutting costs. How do you, how do you plan your, your business? Do you plan it in 90 day increments, right? I call those fast starts and sprints, right? Do you do that? Do you work on strategies? Are you constantly putting out your fires? Why not instead of looking at how to put out the fire, why not looking at ways to prevent the fire? I used to be a firefighter. <laughs> Literally in my business, I fought fires all the time. In fact, I was a crisis manager and I, lo I love to create the fires because it gave me this adrenaline junkie fix that when I put the fire out, it was great. Now I can go do something. Until I had a coach on, on my team and started looking at why the fires were starting, did we realize that I was in trouble because I was, for the most part, the one creating the fires, right? Reflection and self-improvement. You guys spend an hour a week just sitting in the quiet with a notepad in front of you and, and just thinking? Because that can change your business in a big way. And of course, radical innovations, strategy, development, and the list can go on. And I, and I know there's a ton of coaches on this on this uh, call today that could add so much more to that $20 an hour value. But figure out where you are in your business. Identify what activities are you doing. If you need to, take a notepad and write down what you're doing. Are you consuming Facebook and social media? Are you contributing to it, right? Are you a poster, a creator, or are you a consumer, right? Those are the kind of things that um, 
I just wanted to share with you guys because I think it's important that as business owners, when we can identify what activities we need to be doing, then we can start to identify what we need to outsource, right? Automate first, if you can, and then outsource second, if you can't, and then whatever's left, I mean, it's up to you to do. As business owners, we always wear way too many hats, right? We got to wear hats for HR, we got to wear hats for team development, we got to wear hats for, you know, all that stuff, right? And Peter's <laughs> adjusting his hat today. And, and it's powerful, right? It's powerful. So when you can figure out where you need to be spending your time, that is where your business is going to grow to. And I love that you guys have created this network because your network is equal to your net worth. And I, trust me, if you guys do not like where you're at financially, have a look at the five people you hang around with the most. So to quote, I think it's on uh, uh, Dale Carnegie, you are the sum of the five people you hang around with in the books you read. And if you don't like where you're at financially, it might be attributed directly to your network. So you guys have created an amazing network here that will inspire everybody's net worth to grow. And I love that. So thank you for allowing me to be here. My name is Wes Kowalczuk, uh, Business Impact. I help contract contractors grow and scale by figuring out what it is they're not doing that they should be doing to create predictable growth in their businesses. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Waze, for the first time ever on the Coffee Shop Show, guys. Absolutely amazing insights. I mean, um, Chris just posted uh, wine just got very expensive all of a sudden. <laughs> and I was watching that $20 mark. I'm like, if you're only paying me $20 an hour, I am not cooking a meal. <laughs> I think I'll burn a $500 so, note right now. So let me put a caveat on that. Those activities in there, if you if you stress relief from those, if they're enjoyable for you, those are activities that you want to make sure you're doing. But if you don't take joy in any of that, outsource it. Get rid of it off your plate. But if you do, you know, if you if you love cooking and that's therapy for you, right? Go do it. Right. For me, going to the gun range is therapy. Like I call that range therapy. And so that is therapy for me. That is two thousand dollar an hour activity for me because it it centers me and it gets me, gets all that stuff out of there. Right. Mm -hmm. So definitely whatever gives you that, that stress release, it's a high value hour. So go spend it. I love that. And that's something that Karen also, also, um, she always lectures us on is having the wild spring moments on making sure that you are acting. And Karen, you say it better than I do on your behalf. Don't you just want to say it? And Nistine, I don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. No, you should be spending at least 80% in your wellspring and stuff that energizes you and keeps you, you know, energized. If you're spending less time on that, you get home feeling drained. Look at what you're spending your tasks doing. And if it's if it's draining you, get rid of them as quickly as you can. Yeah, um, to, you know, talking about wearing hats, um, I think when we first started, we had to wear many hats. Um, but we had to wear many hats because we had to learn what each hat was. You, 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 can't, um, you can't become an entrepreneur and not understand the different aspects of your business. So wearing multiple hats in the beginning is highly necessary. It's the learning process. Today I'm wearing this hat. Tomorrow I'm wearing that hat. Later today I'm going to wear a different hat. Um, if you don't understand your processes and you don't, then you will not understand your, your story, your brand, your um, who you are, or what's, what's even happening in your space. Um, and you can get to a, a place where um, taking that hat off and handing it to somebody else is quite a pivotal point in your business. And you have to make sure that A, you're doing it at the right time. B, you're handing the hat to the right person. Otherwise, you're just giving them a hat. You, know, you, you don't want it to be a pointless exercise. Um, and, and I think that's where this space has been so absolutely brilliant. And I'm not talking about just this space, but networking and relationship building. I mean, yes, we're a great space. There are many other spaces like us. Different spaces work for different people. But get into those spaces. Get yourself, um, you know, get yourself accountable. You know, find someone that you can talk to. Find somebody that's ahead of you in the game. Find somebody that's behind you in the game. Because even teaching somebody that is behind you helps you push forward. You know, have somebody right next to you. 
Um, those are just relationships. Those are copies. Those are conversations. Um, during those moments, you will figure out, actually, I need this person to coach me. You will understand the value of what that coaching is because you know what it achieves. Don't just go find a coach Ben, because he's made out of gold. You think, oh, if I throw more money at this person, I'll be successful. That's not always the truth. That is not always the truth. You can go find all those big brand names out there, go get all excited, go to a conference and leave wondering why you went in the first place. I mean, give me a, give me a break. If you're not going to have a coach that actually knows who you are, you know who they are, they can walk the journey with you, not just make you happy for an hour. They walk the journey with you, and that's what that's these people in this space. These people have walked the journey. Um, I, I'm not about to go to some conference and have some guy make me smile from ear to ear, and then I'm going to take up my credit card and buy some course, and then I leave not knowing what I bought and what happened. That, that will not make me a success. Um, if you're going to outsource, outsource to people that are going to walk the journey with you. You have to go into a space where you understand who they are within their business, that they can understand who you are within yours, that they can actually walk with you. Otherwise, you're wasting your own time. Thank you, Peter. That, those are golden words. I absolutely adore that. Well, they should be golden. I said them. <laughs> I mean, it's such an important lesson that I had to learn, had to learn for myself in business. So thank you so much. Um, also, wait, this is another thing that you guys made me think of. So there's a difference between sales and marketing, right? Like, I don't know how you guys feel about this. Maybe you can... Uh, or post your like answers in the live chat on the YouTube channel, like right now. But I feel that if you have like one like amount to invest, and you're deciding should I spend it on marketing or sales, you have to spend that money on sales because there's a different between there's a difference between marketing and sales. And sales is actually the direct process of reaching out, where marketing. It's things that you buy to kind of like support that process. I'm not sure. I'm not the expert in this space. But if you have like a comment or an opinion on this topic, please post your answer in the live chat on YouTube right now. I need to see those answers coming in on YouTube. And while you are doing that, there are some awesome, awesome, amazing people on the live stream right now Chris actually gave me the list because I want to give all of them shout outs well, be before you give them shout outs um, in this particular space if you are an audience member and you're watching the show and you're thinking you know what this is something I'm battling with but I don't know which direction to go in listen to some of the comments that have been made go back, go back onto the YouTube channel um, see who's making what comments see who fits into your process and if you don't know who they are, well, their link is in the description below. Reach out and have a coffee. Build, build a relationship. If you're not too sure if you want a coach, if you're not too sure if you want a VA, or if you're not too sure what your process is, well, then reach out to these people and actually get to know who they are. Um, it's, it's really as easy as that. So we're going to be looking out for your comments on the actual YouTube channel. I am so keen to hear your thoughts on that question, like sales or marketing, which one do you outsource to first? And then on the live chat right now, we have Mo, Clarissa, Alan, Rona, Always Summon, Natalie, and Janine. You guys are the bomb.com. Thank you so much for being on YouTube and watching us and supporting us and connecting with us. You guys are the reason why we are here every single week. Like We absolutely adore you and we'll be here every single week just for you. Also remember, if you liked any of the people that you saw on the show today or you want to learn more from them, any of the stuff that they shared, go and connect with them. All their LinkedIn links are in the actual description down below. And um, these are the people you want to have by your side. They're the people that's going to make your entrepreneurial journey successful and worthwhile. Amazing. Okay, guys, so that is a wrap for us from the Coffee Shop Show for this week. Thank you so much for being here with us. We will be here with you again next week, same time, same place. And it doesn't mean you all need to leave instantly.
people on natural zoom you're welcome to stay with us we always have a backstage chat um, but people on YouTube, that is us for right now. Thank you so much for supporting us. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Click the notification bell so you can get notified whenever we go live. And uh, bring all your friends along. We're creating a safe space for entrepreneurs around the world. This is how we're saving the global economy one small business at a time. Lots of love. See you next week.